but Dagara people say that no one come into this world for no reason. That we come here carrying a gift and a purpose. And the, our purpose is indeed to deliver the gift that we brought with us, which is why our hearts and our soul are constantly longing to be of service at whatever level. Welcome everyone to the Power of Shamanism Summit. My name is Christy Peoples. I'm a producer here at Sounds True and I'll be your host. Today, Dr. Maladoma Somme will be teaching on the importance and benefits of connecting with the ancestors and the other world. He's broadcasting from Orlando, Florida, while the Sounds True team and I are all here in our Boulder studio. A free recording of this session will remain accessible for 24 hours. And if you wish, you can also purchase the entire series with unlimited access to each recording, transcripts from each session, and bonus gifts from our presenters. And now, it's my honor to introduce you to Dr. Maladoma Somme. For more than 20 years, Elder Maladoma has shared the wisdom of his ancestors and tribal elders, which has awakened a deep knowing in the hearts of others and has invited the renewal of a deep and abiding relationship with all beings on earth. Elder Maladoma is the author of several books, including Ritual, Power, Healing, and the Community, and The Healing Wisdom of Africa finding life purpose through nature, ritual, and community. Dr. Somme holds three master's degrees and two doctorates from the Sorbonne and Brandeis University. He is initiated elder in his village in Dano, Burkina Faso, West Africa. He travels throughout the world bringing a message of hope, healing, and reconciliation through the powerful tools of ritual and community building. Welcome, Dr. Maladoma Somme. Thank you. I'm happy you have me here. Thank you. So, uh, it is important that uh, this moment of awareness includes a thought on our ancestors, particularly on the subject of how important it is and the benefit we do get by including them in our life, in our consciousness, and our pursuit of greater clarity, a sense of direction in this life. The culture I come from cannot survive and has never thought of surviving without the ancestors, which is part of the reason why the subject has become for me one of the pillars of the topics that I've been contributing in the West for consciousness, awareness, because I've noticed that indeed in a culture like mine where relationship with ancestor is, a, is as commonplace as anything else, the contrast with this culture was extremely uh, so wide that I could not imagine sharing the spirituality of my people and even contributing to people's sense of direction without a heavy reliance on the necessity for people to find ways to reach out to their ancestors, to let themselves be known by their ancestors and to engage them as contributors, supporters, and guides in their everyday life. Uh, Dagara culture sees the ancestors as the one who are constantly looking up to us, partly because we come into this dimension from the very dimension they're currently in. And it is that same place 
the spirit world that we're going to return to meet with them. Furthermore, the reason for their interest in us and the expectation of us reciprocating that interest has to do with the fact that they are the one that facilitated our coming into this world. They are the one who heard our intention to come to this planet because they were at that position, uh, at that level of support that could make it possible for us to fulfill the, the, the mission associated with our desire to be in this planet. The Dagger people have it that uh, before uh, we came into this world, we were in the land of the ancestors. Our attention was constantly directed towards what was going on here, was a mind to see to it, or at least to wish we could see to it that those we care for can actually walk a path that is full of light, that is dignifying, that is elegant, because it is fulfilling the purpose associated with being in this planet. Notice here that I mentioned this without further explanation, but Dagara people say that no one come into this world for no reason, that we come here carrying a gift and a purpose and the, our purpose is indeed to deliver the gift that we brought with us, which is why our hearts and our soul are constantly longing to be of service at whatever level, to be of such a service that we can verify that thanks to us, we have made the world around us better. And so this intention alone signaled the presence behind it of purpose and even the presence of a gift, a kind of know-how that could allow the, the way we walk in this world to look like we are contributing as engineers to the beautification of this planet. And so this is something that could eventually lead to a lot of confusion if we turn out to, to not be clear about what that gift is and what even is our purpose on this planet. The confusion signal, the need to connect with the source that granted us the permission to come into this world in such a way that there be a, 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 an assistance allowing us to come into greater clarity about that gift so that we can fulfill our purpose. And so ancestors are constantly on a standby, not only to listen to us, but also they are on a standby to intervene in our lives for the better because from where they are, they have the capacity to contribute substantially to a relatively smooth progress or journey in this planet, but they need our collaboration. They need our authority to translate into a request, a demand, or some kind of reach out to them so that they can therefore engage us. And so this is why I have looked in this culture for all these areas where people were feeling isolated and supported failures uh, being registered in their lives, trying to do this and trying to do that, but finding out that somehow obstacles, adversities of one type or another 
keep either slowing them down or making it totally impossible for them to move forward. And all I could think in those moments was, why not reach out to the ancestor? Why not tell the ancestor exactly as you feel, as you think, so that they can feel encouraged or give them the permission authorized to intervene in order to give us the clarity we need for this for the path we must travel on it goes without saying that the ancestors are looking at us as authority having uh, arrived on this planet in order to exercise that authority with respect to the reason why we are here so that at the end of our journey on this planet we can say because we feel it the mission has been accomplished anytime there is less than a certitude about where we're going the question must be raised as to what kind of approach do we have to where we come from and who we are associated with it is not because we can't see them that they're not there it's not because we don't know them that therefore they are irrelevant in our lives if we don't know them they do know us and they do hold us so dearly in their heart in their uh, in their in our in their best wishes that it is important that uh, we take the initiative as individual with a certain amount of authority so that the collaboration can begin so that we can feel the end of this sense of a long journey in this planet and instead experience the benefit of feeling escorted all along in those moments when the going seems difficult and in the moment when it is fluent. So our ancestors are constantly on a standby to hear from us, but they're always watching every step we are taking to tell the ancestor, or let's just say, fill the ancestor on, on the circumstances that we are experiencing in this dimension is somewhat like educating them in the reality that we have become privy to and in so doing give them a chance to have greater clarity on the methods of intervention it is critical that we do not think that because they are our ancestors they should see for themselves what we what we are experiencing, the difficulty that we are encountering, not to mention the feeling that we have with respect to the style with which we are living our life. It is important, therefore, that we take responsibility to communicate with them, starting with a meeting point in this, the, the discretionary places of our own habitation, in the form of a shrine dedicated to them as if this shrine is a rendezvous point, a meeting place between us and the ancestors. And that shrine can be uh, pictures of those ancestors, sacred objects, but whatever we choose to bring there, we must therefore become uh, uh, aware that we are using these items as physical pieces into which the ancestors can enter in order to better hear us, to better sense us, to better feel how we are at, in the moment when we are exchanging this important information with them, etc., etc. It is important also that we realize that ancestors are less interested in us wanting to pray into them the way we pray to God. They want us to approach them like the grandfather, the grandmother, the great-grandmother and the great-grandfather who are holding us dear to their heart and therefore expect us to be just the way we are as we, we approach them. Why? Simply because family is family. 
ancestors our ancestors simply because they have shed the temple of the body they used to inhabit and therefore uh, are no longer uh, privy to that. That's why we can't see them. But their presence does not become diminished as a result of the relinquishing of the physical body. In fact, they become that much more aware, that much more conscious of what we need and where we are going with our needs and more importantly, aching to contribute something to alleviate the number of challenges that we have to confront every day. So in that sense, there is a way in which we must take into account that the benefit of actually reaching out to the ancestor is not only start with acknowledging the ancestor's perception of us as authorities, as people who have the power to authorize them to collaborate with us, but also people endowed with this profound gift, with this purpose that are both consistent for the re of the reason why we are granted permission to walk in this dimension. And for that reason, first, knowing that these ancestors do want the best from us could eventually lead us to a posture that will therefore grant them the status of the ancestor. And I'm saying this because I've heard time and again the fact that what about the fact that our ancestor once upon a time when they were in this world were were authors of all kinds of things that are less than elegant, some of them terrible. And what about the legacy of abuse, pain, uh, this and that, that they have left behind for us to deal with? And I have to say that in approaching them from this perspective, in thinking of them from this perspective, what we are doing is actually criminalizing uh, family members as if they were still operating on this planet, on this dimension. When in fact, the shift from this dimension to another does not mean that one arrive in the other dimension still with the same amount of shortcoming, the same type of uh, shortcoming that they were privy to while here. And in fact, going to the land of the ancestors is embracing all of a sudden the benefit of this cosmic per perception that comes with the relinquishing of the body and as such becoming spirit with all the purity consistent with the requirement of that dimension understanding also that in order to be in this dimension there are certain requirements one of which is indeed having a physical temple inside of which the spirits can dwell all the way until such a day when that physical temple is no longer needed and the spirit can then travel to the land where you become the bearer of the title of the ancestors. It is important to understand that this way so that eventually in approaching the ancestors, one is willing to at least address them as people who must understand the current quandary that our lives are caught into. That the, the, the situation that involves sometimes a legacy that we're having trouble handling, trouble dealing with, and the urgent need for them to contribute something so that that which is the shadow side of their legacy can be made clear, can be healed, reconciled, cleansed and purified in such a way that purpose can be pursued, gift can be known, 
and all these things that make a person walk in this dimension as elegant and as dignifying as can be. <laughs>